This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries. Ephesians chapter 2, and we'll start in verse 10. Paul is writing, and I so value this verse particularly because it lets us know what happened before we were ever on the scene for our lives. Uh Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, For we are God's own handiwork. Um, God did not leave us to an angel (laughs) to to bring to pass his plan. He took it on himself. We are God's own handiwork. His workmanship, and then he tells us what that handiwork is. We were recreated in Christ Jesus. Amen. And then he says this, born anew that we may do those good works which God predestined and planned beforehand for us. I I was blessed by a testimony of a man who, uh, from a different country, and another pastor was telling his testimony. But this man had served his pastor in a right-hand capacity for many, many years, and um, he had a physical condition that he ended up having a heart attack, and uh, he had the experience of going to heaven, but he didn't stay there. He came back, and he said that during his time there in heaven that he was asked, do you want to see your mansion? And he says, I would love to. So they took him to the place to see his mansion, and he said it was, it was unfinished. There was no roof on it. It was not completed. And he said, my mansion. (laughs) He thought he was going to see this fabulous, beautifully finished structure. And he saw something under construction. And he said, this is, is it going to be left like this? And it was said to him, oh, don't be concerned about it. Because you have so many good works in your future that they are the materials we build with. So what we do for Jesus matters. The more we do, the more we give heaven to work with. Our our works don't stay on the earth. They go to heaven and they live with us through eternity. So it does matter what we do on the earth. We know this, we're not saved by works. Jesus paid the price and we're saved by grace through our faith in what he has done for for us. But once we're saved, works are everything. Not to earn something, but because we have been born anew, because we are recreated. So we are to be completely focused on bearing fruit for our Father, because the works are bearing fruit for His glory. And as this one man testified of his time in heaven, that his works became the building materials for what he would live in for eternity. So it does matter. I said it does matter. So it says that we are God's own handiwork, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew. Look at this, that we may do those good works, which God predestined and planned beforehand for us. God has works for us to complete before we ever arrive at those works. He has already planned that certain works be done through your hands that certain works be fulfilled through your life. And God planned these works. He he planned them beforehand for us. How are they going to come to pass? The next phrase tells us, taking paths, which he prepared 
ahead of time that we should walk in them. These works are on the paths. And as we take the paths, then we're empowered to do those works. If we get off path, we can't reach those works. They're out of reach. The works are on the path. The path that he prepared. And I so appreciate this phrase and when it says taking paths, which he prepared ahead of time. He's not talking about before you reach this moment ahead of time. He's not talking about yesterday or last week or last year. He says he planned this bef- ahead before time began being calculated. Amen. Right. Before the measurement of time ever existed, God already planned for the greatness that he has for each and every life. Yes. Means this, you are well planned for. Yes. Your parents might not have planned you. <laughs> But God's plan is completely yes. in place for your life. So good. Amen. But it's our privilege and it's our responsibility taking paths, yes. which he prepared ahead of time. Why would we ever want to take an unprepared path? A path of our own forming because there's no preparation on that path. But there's total provision and preparation on the path that he prepared ahead of time for us that we should walk in them. He prepared it, but he cannot walk it for us. He prepared it, but your parents cannot walk it for you. Your pastors cannot walk it for you. Whoever is, whoever is anointed and planned for in that path, you are anointed to take that path. And it's not a shared path. It's not something you can say, I give you my responsibility. No, you can't pass that path to someone else. You have to take it. Taking paths which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them. Look at this. We should walk in them. It's not certain. It's up to us. We should walk in them. And then this is the result of walking the paths that he prepared and planned for us long ago, living the good life. On those paths that he prepared is the good life. You're not assured of a good life outside those paths because the good life for you is on the paths. You need to be completely absorbed with the plan. The plans he made and prepared for me on those paths. It's your, your, your entire emphasis of your life is I'm staying with the plan of God. I'm staying with the plan of God. Why? Because everything you need in life is along the, it's along that path of his plan. Amen. That we should walk in them living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. He did not author anything else but the good life. And if we're living less than the good life, we're off the plan. We're off the path. Because on that path and on that plan is the good life. But I will say this, the paths that he has for us to take, they're faith paths. They call for our faith. That everything that he's prepared on that path Everything that your life needs is on that path. On that path, there's all the provision. On that path is all the health you'll need for your body. On that path is all the supply you'll ever need for your finances, for your home. On that path is all the peace that your mind will ever need. On that path is the spiritual help for your spiritual development, the pastors you need, the revelation you need, the spiritual training and the oversight that comes through those that God has ordained to speak and impart into your life. They're on the paths. Your life on that paths, on those paths, total joy, total victory. Amen. Everything you need to live the good life that you don't even know you need yet. Come on. That's right. And if this aisle represented his paths, it's all along this aisle 
all along these paths are everything he's prepared, but it's going to call for your faith to lay hold of every single thing. It won't just jump onto you because you're on the path. It's there for you to collect with your faith. It's there for you to gather up with your faith. The word tells us how much that, um, remember Ed's sermon, uh, God loves you more than a bird. He takes care of the birds. Look at the birds. Look at the birds. How he takes care of them. Aren't you better than a bird? Remember the sermon Ed would preach. You're better than a bird. He takes care of them. God provides even for birds who don't sow. Because he's your father, there is a measure of provision. But if you'll get into his sowing principles, you'll not only have his provision as a father, you'll have his harvest as a sower. There you go. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so you can live with the bare minimums of life or you can become a sower too and not only have the father's daily care and provision, you can have an abundance of harvest that comes from, from functioning like he functions. Amen. But... When God takes care of the birds, you notice this. How does he do it? He fills the earth with all the provision they ever need. That's how he takes care of them. The earth is full of everything they need. He doesn't throw their food into their nest. They have to go gather it. This is what you are to do on this path. He supplied your, your paths with his complete provision to live the good life. But now it's up to your, it's, it's your privilege to gather everything with your faith that he has already provided. Don't get on a different path because if you choose something different over there, there's no preparation for your arrival. When you say, I want to go my own way, I want to go my own way with a, with a profession. I want to marry who I want to marry. I want to live where I want to live. I want to buy what I want to buy without any input from him. He'll let you do that, but there's no preparation for you there. Amen. Amen. And every mama knows this. A trip is only successful because it was prepared for. Yeah, that's true. That is true. That is true. That is true. <laughs> Amen. The successful life is the prepared life. Living in the and walking in line with what he prepared for us. So it's up to us to learn to cooperate with all he has prepared. What he has prepared will not just jump into your life. You have to learn how to access it, receive of it. And I tell you what, everything he's prepared for you, be a taker of all of it. Faith flows in two directions. Generosity flows in two directions, in the direction of giving, but also in the direction of receiving. Don't ever let it be said, I have a, a hard time receiving. Don't ever let that come out of your mouth again. I have a hard time somebody blessing me because what's going to happen? You're going to have a hard time receiving of what he's already prepared for you on the path. When you don't receive skillfully, there's going to be things left unclaimed on the path of your life. When we understand that God's supply, provision, and preparation for our life is total, total, where is there room for worry? Where is there room for fear? If we will so have that built into us, he has totally prepared for every moment of my life. Every circumstance that shows up already has a prepared answer for it. If we will live mindful that everything I will ever need is completely prepared and waiting for my faith to lay hold of it, that's how we live the good life. Amen. 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 The last phrase of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 3, and this is the Amplified translation. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 3 in the Amplified. The last phrase says this. Listen to this. The King James doesn't word it this way, but I like how the Amplified words it. It says, His works had been completed and prepared and waiting. It's waiting on you. Every answer you're going to need for your life is waiting. Every victory, it's waiting on you. You're not waiting on God. 
Yeah. He's waiting on your, your faith to arrive. That's right. His works had been completed and prepared and waiting. What's it waiting on? For all who would believe. From when? From the foundation of the world. Before time ever began being calculated, everything of your life was totally and completely prepared for. Amen. Spiritually, yeah. mentally, yeah. physically, yeah. materially, yeah. in every realm, every arena, everything your life would ever need. And not only that, enjoy. Everything your life would enjoy, completely prepared and waiting. What's it waiting? It's waiting on your faith. Yeah. It won't come into your life because it's prepared. It comes in because our faith lays hold of what's prepared. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Nothing of God's plan is automatic. You will not float into it. You will get there by the walk of faith, a life of faith. Yes. His full provision is on his path, not ours. Right. To veer from his path is to veer from what he prepared. Yes. To veer from what he completed. Yes. Amen. The good thing is, if we get off the path and we recognize I'm off the path, there's another path to get you back on. Yes. <laughs> Don't ever let the devil dupe you into thinking because you're off. It can never be better. You can't, it can be better, not on your path. It'll never get better on your path. But the way it gets better is there's a path back over to his path. How do you get on it? You have to take it. Taking paths. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Just driving your car, you may miss your exit sometime, but there's another ramp to get you back on. And God knows this, people miss their exits. People miss their turns. People miss their cues from the Holy Ghost. But you don't have to stay off course. Recognize I'm off. I'm off. I'm getting back on. And there's a path right there because he's already prepared the path that you needed to get back on. He didn't prepare for your failure. He prepared yes. for your victory by giving you Amen. another path. Amen. Amen. I'm so grateful that the plan of God is not just one little area. The path of God that if you jump off, you're off in the abyss. That's it. No, it's paths, multiple. Not because he has multiple plans, but because he has multiple paths to get you into the plan. That if you miss one path, there's another path coming. Yes. Don't miss it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Psalms 139, if you'll turn with me. Psalms 139 and verse 16. Psalms 139, verse 16. And this is the King James translation I'll read out of. Psalms 139, verse 16. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. So that means before the body was ever completely formed. And it was imperfect. It was still the substance of God that he sees. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book... All my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. It's amazing. Yes. So before your body was ever completely formed in the womb, everything of the members of your body was already recorded. This is the answer to what? baffles and confuses so many in society yeah, today. That's right. yeah. That's right. This answers yeah. 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 Very good. issues, social right. issues that are really spiritual issues. Um, <clears throat> all, I love this. 
for those who need a miracle in your body, all my members were written. Oh, that's yeah. so good. That's good. All my yes. members were written. Yeah. All my organs. Yes. All my digits. Yes. All my limbs. Yes. All my bones. All yes. my members yes. were written. Yes. And he didn't write a deformity. He didn't write something broken and not working. There's your miracle verse for a body part. All my members were written. And I lay hold of every member he authored for me. Now, we'll not have a healing service, but God didn't record faulty and missing members. The Amplified of this verse. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. Only his eyes can see what hasn't been formed yet. It's amazing, our Father. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. And look, look at this. And in your book, God has books. Not just iPads, books. And in your book, all the days of my life were written before ever they took shape when as yet there was not none of them. Your days, that the life he authored for you and wrote in his book, the days of miracles, the days of blessings, the days of help, the days of wisdom, the days of answers, the days of bearing great fruit. All of it was written in his book. Now, all we have to do is find out what's in the book and live it out. And what's in his book that's recorded is part of that book you hold in your hand. You're going to find your book in that book. The book of your life in that book. I like what the Norley translation says of this verse. In your record were assessed the days that were intended for me. Before they ever existed. God intended a life for you. God intended certain events. God intended certain great works. God intended that your life look a certain way. The only way we can live the life he intended is stay with his path, right. stay with his plan, because that's the intended life. Yes. I don't want to get to heaven and see what could have been. Yes, that's right. I want to live it on the earth. Right. Don't you? Yes. yes. Amen. Acknowledge that. Live mindful of that. There's a life he intends for me, and I'm not going to let someone else's intention pull me off of what God intended. Even my own intentions. I will not let it pull me away from what God intended for me. How do you stay with what God intended? You have to live mindful of it. You have to talk about it. Every decision, know this, does it play into what he planned? Is it, is it flowing out of what he planned for me? Even the days when there are opposing circumstances and tests that show up, God didn't plan those, but he planned the victory in the face of those. And all those circumstances that come against, all the tests and trials and temptations that come against can never dispossess you of what God already planned. They cannot dispossess you. Unless we don't take what he planned. It's up to us to take it. How do we draw on and receive what God planned? Go with me to John chapter 16. Because these things were written in a book. We don't have that book in front of us. We have his word in front of us. But we don't have the book in front of us that shows every detail Right. Of the life he intended, mm -hmm. yeah. right? But we do have the lead, yeah. the guide, yes. the helper. Yes. He has access to the book yes. of your life. That's good. That's good. That's good. He knows 
what's in the book. Why? Because he knows the mind of God. Amen. He knows the mind of God for your life. He knows what's in the book of what God intended for your life to look like. Yes. That your days, what should they hold? The spirit of God is the go-between between the book and you. And the Holy Spirit is really here to lead us into the book, the written word. That's what he's here for. He's not here to lead us into just something we planned or something of our own making. It's all in line with the book. The spirit of God's interested in working with the book. That's what he's here for, to work with the book, to lead you into that book. He's not here to perform our will. The Holy Spirit is more, work, work, more interested in working with the Word than with anything else. John chapter 16, verse 13. How be it when He, the Spirit of truth is come, He will guide you into all truth. What about this? The truth of what God recorded in the book about your life. Yes. There's truth. That's the truth for your life. Anything else that's not in that book is not truth. It might be a fact. It might be something that's going on in your life. But if God didn't record it, it's not truth. He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of himself. He, the Holy Spirit's not going to speak his own plan. He's not going to speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. From who? From, from the Father who planned your life. But whatsoever he shall hear. From Jesus who purchased your life. <laughs> but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Look at this. And he will show you things to come. How does he know what's to come? It's already written in a book for your life. That's right. It's in the book. Yeah. <laughs> the book of your life has your name on the front of it. And I, my, my, my best estimation is that name's written in red. Yeah. Purchased. It's a purchased plan by the blood of Jesus. So the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. He's not going to go to a different book. To show and reveal you your future. He's going to go to the book of your life. For your life. And show you what's to come. What has already been prepared and planned. And it's waiting for you. Verse 14. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine. The Holy Spirit doesn't take his own plan. He receives of the mind of the Father. The wisdom of the Father. The book about your life. He receives of that and notices, and he'll show it to you. Why? So that you're not guessing, but you're knowing and going by what is shown you. We trust you've enjoyed today's program. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries.